All right, good morning, Chem 1 fans. Today we're trying to extend our knowledge of gas laws by talking about Graham's Law of Diffusion. But before we get there, a little bit of background. So, first off, you might already realize kinetic energy is energy due to motion. Anything moving has kinetic energy. Gas particles are no different. And you can calculate kinetic energy of anything uh, by using this little equation, kinetic energy is equal to one half times the mass times the velocity squared. Okay, so we're gonna take advantage of that equation here in just a little bit. And we have to remember as well, if you remember way back when we started talking about gases, that one of our postulates of kinetic molecular theory is that for gases, kinetic energy is proportional to the absolute temperature. So we'll be taking advantage of that idea as well. So we have some notes on Schoology there. And so here are some of the slides that are there. Um, Graham's Law of Diffusion is dealing with the spreading out of a gas from high to low concentrations. Gas particles always expand to fill their containers. And so a simple example of this would be opening a bottle of perfume in front of a room and eventually everybody in the room should be able to smell the perfume as the liquid molecules evaporate and become gas particles. They bounce around with all the other gas particles and eventually they'll spread out and fill the space. And Graham's Law deals with that diffusion process. Now there's another process that's very similar to that called effusion. And that's when a gas escapes through a tiny hole in the container. Um, so you can treat diffusion and effusion really as the same thing as we're going through this. Okay, now, uh, because of the kinetic energy equation, if you have gases at the same temperature, they all have to have the same kinetic energy. So that's fixed. But that doesn't mean all the particles are doing the exact same thing. Okay, so if you have gas particles that have increased mass, their mass is bigger, that automatically means their velocity is gonna be lower. Okay, so if you have different gases, all at the same temperature, we know they all have the same kinetic energy, but we also know that mass and velocity are inverses of each other. Okay, so that's another key part of all this as we start to talk more about Graham's Law. Okay? Okay, so let's see where Graham's Law comes from. So, imagine you have two gases We'll cleverly label them A and B, and they're at the same temperature. Okay, so we know those two gases have to have the same kinetic energy. So I can say the kinetic energy of gas A is equal to the kinetic energy of gas B. And then I can substitute in for kinetic energy. So I'll have one half times the mass of gas A times the velocity of gas A squared mm -hmm. equals one half times the mass of gas B times the velocity gas B squared. Okay, this will get us started to come up with Graham's Law. Of course, always remember you learn math to do better science. And so we can drop out the one half. That will cancel out. Now we're going to collect our terms. Okay, we're going to put all the velocities on the left. We're going to put the mass terms on the right. Okay, 
so our velocity term on the left would look like that. We'll end up with mass of B over the mass of A. And when you look at this, you can see that inverse relationship between mass and volume because the mass and velocity terms are kitty corner to each other in this equation. And we could leave it that way, but typically uh, they do one other thing. I'll come back up over here where I have a little more room. We're just going to take the square root of both sides. And we'll end up with this. That is known as Graham's Law of Diffusion. Uh, and remember, it can also be used for diffusion. That wasn't difficult, was it? <laughs> okay, so how does that, which you wrote on the whiteboard, relate to that, which is on the smart board? Oh, uh, okay. I see what you're saying, Mr. Mark. So, so when it comes around to talking about mass, uh, because we're talking about gas particles, we could uh, replace mass in there with molar mass. We just need to substitute in the molar mass of our two gases. And if you talked about rates in math class before, okay, rate is a measure of how something changes with time, and velocity is exactly that, because velocity is distance over time. So velocity is one type of rate. Mm -hmm. Does that help, Mr. Moore? My, yes, it does. My back on track. So, <laughs> okay, so can you show us an example problem in which you use Graham's Law the way it's written on the uh, okay. smart board? Let's see what we have. Examples. Okay, what if we were to compare ammonia, NH3, and ethanol? Okay, so imagine you're standing up front, you have a friend up front, let's say, they have a container of the two gases, you're in the back of the room, you uncork the bottles, and you wonder, well, which one of these will I smell first? Okay, now we don't really need to plug into the equation necessarily to, to determine this, we can just think about it conceptually, and we would just have to think about, well, what are the molar masses of those two gases? Thinking about that, do you have the periodic table memorized? Yes, we all do. We all do. Silly question. Okay, so the molar mass of ammonia is about 17 grams per mole, and the molar mass of ethanol is about 46 grams per mole. And so, therefore, if a ethanol molecule is heavier, it is not going to be moving as quickly. And therefore, who do you think is going to get across the room first? That leaves ammonia. Yep, I think ammonia is going to win the race. You'll smell ammonia first, and then sometime later, you'll smell the, the ethanol. What do you think? Does that make sense? It's all about the same temperature, same kinetic energy, but not the same speed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do you have a math example for us? Uh, we might have one. Okay, so imagine at a certain temperature and pressure, we have chlorine, Cl2, and they have an average velocity of 324 meters per second. And the question then is, well, what would be the average velocity of the sulfur dioxide molecule under those same conditions? All right, well, let's see if we can figure that out. Yeah, we're using different terms, uh, but really meaning the same thing, not meaning the same thing, but having the same application. We have the word velocity in this problem. 
which really is a rate of diffusion or effusion. So any of those, uh, rate of diffusion, rate of effusion, velocity, can be used the same way in Graham's Law. Let's see what Mr. Hevel's got on the board All for right, us. So we know the velocity of our chlorine. We're curious about the velocity of the SO2. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get the molar mass of those two gases fairly easily. Now in the Graham's Law equation, you'd have to decide which gas would you like to be, gas A or gas B, and it really makes no difference at all. Um, I guess I'm going to let SO2 be gas A, because that's kind of what I'm looking for here. So I could say in my Graham's Law equation then, I'm going to have the velocity of SO2 over the velocity of Cl2 equals square root, and then I'll need the molar mass of Cl2 over the molar mass of SO2. Okay, so let's see if we can plug in the numbers. Velocity of SO2, the chlorine we know is 324 yep. meters per second equals square root. Let's see, have you figured out chlorine's molar mass yet? Yep. It's about 71. How about good old SO2? That's about 64 grams per mole. So now we have all the numbers plugged in. It's Monday morning, so my mental math isn't as sharp as it normally would be. <laughs> so we'll have to calculate our uh, value there under the square root sign. Yeah, now solving for that unknown, you can do it a couple of ways. You can um, just take the square root of 71 over the square root of 64. We remember our uh, tools from algebra, right? Or just get, a, get an actual answer for that thing. Yeah, so 71 over 64, and then take the square root. That works the yep. same way. You get 1.05. Yep, I got about 1.05, Mr. Warren. Okay. So big finish. <laughs> I'll come back up here. Okay, let's see. That means the velocity of SO2 is 1.05 times bigger than the chlorine. It makes sense. The uh, SO4 is a little bit lighter, so it's going a little bit. Okay, so if we turn the equation around and solve for the velocity of SO2, um, we'll see that SO2's velocity will be a little bit bigger, which makes sense because it's a little bit lighter than chlorine. And so when I multiply those two values, I get about 340 meters per second. Okay. So, yeah, back in the problem. The velocity of chlorine, the heavier gas, was 324. The velocity of sulfur dioxide, the lighter gas, is a little bit more. So lower molar mass means higher rate of diffusion. I agree. Okay. Can you give us one more example? Uh, I think we have that. Let's see. Okay, now the question is, what is the ratio of hydrogen's diffusion rate to nitrogen's? Okay, so similar process. Now, uh, the difference though is we're just looking for the ratio of how their velocities compare. We're not going to get actual velocity values, but we'll have a comparison between the two. Decided which gas is going to be moving faster? 
Hmm. Hmm. I think it's related to the molar mass. Is that right? I, I believe you're right, Mr. Moore. <laughs> so again, we'll have to decide which gas do you want to call A or B. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to let A equal the velocity of hydrogen. And I'm going to let B represent the nitrogen. Okay. So now if I plug into Graham's law, I'll have the velocity of hydrogen over the velocity of nitrogen equals square root of either molar masses. Remember, these are diatomic. Mm -hmm. Did you factor that in? That'd be an easy thing to forget about. And we'll need the mass of nitrogen on top. So nitrogen is about 28 grams per mole. And hydrogen is about 2 grams per mole. So, let's find out what the square root of 14 is. Get you an actual number here. Okay, 3.74. Okay, so that means the velocity of hydrogen over the velocity of nitrogen is 3.74 to 1. Or, if you wanted to rewrite it, you could say the velocity of hydrogen is 3.74 times greater than the velocity of nitrogen. Because hydrogen is so much lighter, mm -hmm. it's going to be moving quite a bit faster. All right, so with that, should we let these Chem 1 scholars uh, work on a few? We'll have an experiment, too, that involves Graham's Law that will be uh, on for their viewing pleasure. Right. So good luck with Graham's Law, and we'll talk to you later. <laughs>